Hi, I'm TK Nelson, and I'd like to welcome you to the Kaishin Ji Kundo curriculum. One of the first things I want you to understand is the term Kaishin Ji Kundo and what it means. Kaishin uh, translates to open mind, and it's, the translation is in uh, Okinawan and in, uh, in Japanese. Two of my instructors, Tadashi Yamashita, who I trained with for about 15 years, and uh, Taika Sayuyado, who I had the opportunity to work with in his system for about three years. Um, uh, were huge influences on me. Uh, the culture, the Japanese and Okinawan uh, culture, was a big influence on me. And therefore, I wanted something that pays respects um, to, to those teachers and to that culture uh, and, and sort of that, that way of thinking. Um, now the other side of it, the, the Jeet Kune Do, uh, points towards and pays respects uh, towards Guru Dan and Asanto. Uh, and Guru Dan uh, is very influential uh, on a lot of my philosophical beliefs uh, and very, very much so on the physical techniques uh, that I practice as well as students of Guru Dan, by the way. Um, and it's, you know, we wanted to be able to pay respect to, to, to him because of how much he's passed our way and how much it's really influenced the curriculum. So many of my teachers, he's influenced as well. Uh, so on May 18th of 2013, uh, Guru Dan himself uh, told me that he actually encourages me to use the term uh, Kaishin Ji Kundo, which I thought was, was a great thing to hear, to have him tell me. Um, and he actually liked the fact that it paid respects to the teachers that came before him. So I, I'm very happy to be able to use that name um, uh, to pay the respects uh, to those that came before, but also uh, to directly connect us to the Ji Kundo family. I've, so much respect for Guru Dian, all that he's done, and all the lives he's touched, and all the people he's influenced. So, uh, so it's important to me that students uh, understand what the Kaishin Ji Kundo, uh, what, why we put those two names together, and what they relate to. Now, when we use the term Ji Kundo, um, obviously Bruce Lee was the person that originally uh, came up with the term Ji Kundo, and Ji Kundo was, uh, or excuse me, Bruce Lee was was Guru Dian's. Uh, teacher and best friend, and Guru Dan was his top student. When Bruce Lee passed away, um, he only left three people uh, to be instructors, uh, and it was uh, James Lee, Taiki Kimura, and Guru Dan. Um, and Guru Dan is the person that he left in charge of carrying on Ji Kune Do to the next level. Ji Kune Do was uh, Bruce Lee's term, uh, it meant way of the intercepting fist, and basically was his term for um, your personal growth in the martial arts. Uh, but Ji Kune Do is not actually his physical curriculum. Uh, Bruce Lee's physical curriculum was called Jun Fan Gung Fu. Um, and one thing we want you to understand is that the techniques and, and, and approaches of Jun Fan Gung Fu, all of that are in the Kaishin Ji Kune Do as well. Um, so we are very much within the, uh, uh, within the parameters of the Ji Kune Do philosophy, not just the philosophy, but also the, the physical techniques that were taught. Because first you had to get through the Jun Fan Gung Fu in order to be able to get into Bruce Lee's uh, into his Jeet Kune Do section of training. So that Jun Fan was the roots. So we want you to understand that um, as well as training in all the different areas that we're going to look at, the Jun Fan martial arts is part of it. So something you should understand is that the Kaishin program, um, the curriculum is, is my personal belief system in my own training and study of what I believe should come first. Um, uh, maybe not come first, but it's the order I believe that things should be should be learned in or roundabouts thereof uh, to produce um, probably the the quickest amount of learning and practicality. So uh, sometimes I use the term uh, function first and fancy follows. Uh, and for myself, what I've actually done is I've broken this apart into five different areas. These five areas are what I believe from what I've seen of uh, how non-weapon combat. Uh, personal one-on-one, not even personal one-on-one, but just non-weapon combat comes about. And those areas are striking, clinching, trapping, manipulation, and grappling. So let's talk about what each one of those areas are so that you fully understand it and some of the systems that we use that influence uh, using those techniques. So the first area is striking. Well, striking is simply making contact with your opponent in an attempt to cause damage. So this could be punching, kicking, elbows, knees, slaps, form, headbutts, finger jabs, whatever, any kind of impact that we make on our opponent. And we take a lot of our, uh, of our striking from Panantukin, uh, Western Boxing, Muay Thai, Jun Fan, basically any kind of art, uh, even Wing Chun, any, any type of art that has the striking component in it. 
The next area is clinching. Clinching is just simply grabbing and controlling your opponent or regaining control when you've been grabbed. So any kind of grabbing, hugging, hooking, squeezing, that sort of thing falls in the area of clinching. Uh, kind of our, our main influences when it comes to clinching come from Greco-Roman wrestling, come from combat submission wrestling, and Filipino Dumag. The next area is manipulation. Uh, manipulation is simply manipulating your opponent's balance, their joints, uh, their blood, or their air intake. So things like trips, sweeps, takedowns, throws, joint locks, chokes, all these are considered forms of manipulation. The main uh, systems which we kind of draw from for manipulation would, would come from, uh, say, Mafalindo Silat, uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, Combat Submission Wrestling, a little bit of Judo, arts like these. So another area that we've isolated for training is trapping, and specifically we're referring to hand trapping. So seizing or removing a barrier caused by your opponent's hand or arm in order to facilitate your attack or your entry. Um, here you, you'll hear terms like pock or lop or ton or wedge, and the arts we primarily draw from here will be uh, Chinese Wing Chun, uh, Jun Fan Gung Fu, and Filipino Pan and Tukin. The last area we're going to talk about is grappling. And grappling just simply means once a fight is no longer on your feet, once a fight goes to the ground. This is where you really actually see all the different areas come together. This is where we see pins, escapes, transitions, submissions, striking. Uh, and so the main systems that we use for this is we draw from uh, the Gracie family, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, from some of the Machado family, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and a lot also from Combat Submission Wrestling, which was founded by Eric Paulson. So one of the most important things to remember here is that all these areas, the, these five areas, they can be trained and isolated separately. But the other, the other thing is that they can also all be kind of linked together and put together. And that's actually what's going to happen. That's what it should be. Um, but first, you know, think about it almost like, uh, like subjects in school, like in, in high school or college, right? First you have like your math and science and English and, all, and social studies, and they're all separated subjects. But they're all separated subjects, but in time you learn how to put them all together. Where does that happen? Out in the real world, when you graduate, right? So what we want to do is we want to be able to study these five se separate areas so we understand the different pieces, the working pieces inside each one of them, but then we also want to train them together. So we want to understand, for instance, um, uh, take hand trapping. We can, we, can, we can trap in and strike, and that'd be trapping and striking. We could trap in and grab the head, right? So that's now trapping and the clinching. We could, we could trap in and grab the head and start to hit him. Now, now you're doing trapping and clinching and striking. If I trap in, I grab the head, I hit him, I throw him on the ground, right? Well, now we're looking at trapping and the clinching and the striking into manipulation. And once we're on the ground, bam, we're right into our grappling. Same with like grappling. If you look at grappling, uh, holding someone down on the ground in your grappling section, that's essentially clinching. Right? If we, if we look at uh, doing a, an armbar or a choke, that's essentially a manipulation. If we hold them down and start hitting them, if we, if we pin their arms down to the chest and start punching them in the face, right now we're looking at a combination of trapping and striking while we're grappling. So these are the five areas. We really want you to understand that in the Kaishin Jeet Kune Do, it breaks down into five areas. Striking, clinching, manipulation, trapping, and grappling. So we want you to understand the way that the Kaishin JKD curriculum is set up here on the learning site. Um, it is actually set up uh, rank by rank. So when you start, you actually start as what we call a basic level one. Um, so basically what this means is you have uh, basic level one, level two, and level three. You have intermediate level one, level two, and level three. And you have advanced level one, level two, and level three. After that, you have senior levels one through five. Uh, senior level one, would be what we consider a black belt. And actually when you achieve your senior level one, we actually do physically give you a Kaishin Jeet Kune Do black belt. Um, but we primarily just go by certificates up until then for the, uh, for the student levels. So what you're going to see is you're going to see that uh, you can click on uh, the different curriculums that are available on the website. When you click on that curriculum, uh, it'll bring the curriculum up in front of you and you click on the specific technique in that curriculum and that should bring up a tutorial video teaching you uh, that specific technique. Now, if you're in the instructor's membership, what we want to mention is when you go into the instructor area of the website, you're going to see that it's not set up by curriculum. And the reason why is because curriculums change around, right? However, the, the, the technique 
may change from this rank to that rank, but it's still in there. So in the instructor section, what we've actually done is we've actually broken it apart into different areas and categories. So you might want to break that down. So for instance, if you're looking for something like a, you know, like an arm bar, you might want to go to the grappling category and look for, you know, an arm bar off mount or techniques off guard or different things like that. So I want you to be able to understand how to navigate. So what are the focuses of these different types of ranks, these basic, intermediate, advanced, and senior, right? Well, just to give you kind of a quick breakdown to understand, basic levels are based around um, being able to actually physically defend yourself in these various different areas. So in other words, uh, this is the function, this is the, ad, this is the, the application, right? So we want to make sure in these areas you understand, you know, basic punching, kicking, slapping, elbow, knees, so you understand basic striking. We want you to understand basic clinching. We want you to understand the different parts, you know, the wrist, the elbow, the neck, the chest. Um, we want you to know how to escape someone to grab and how to grab somebody back. Uh, we want you to understand uh, really basic trapping. So, you know, pox out, lops out, those sort of, sorts of things, nothing overly fancy. Um, you know, in the basic levels, we want you to understand some basic manipulation of basic takedowns. So I think we have uh, three or four different takedowns. Uh, we may even have up to five different takedowns. It all depends on you know, what the, what the evolution of the curriculum is at that moment, but they're all fairly basic, easy. We don't really uh, put in a lot of throws. Throws mean you actually physically pick somebody up off the ground and dump them down versus a takedown, which just takes them to the ground. Um, and then on the grappling side of things, we want to make sure that you understand how to hold somebody down with good technique and minimal effort. We want you to understand how to escape and how to get away from somebody trying to hold you down. We want you to understand how to get back to your feet. We want you to understand how to defend from strikes on the ground. And we also want you to understand how to strike on the ground. So really what you're looking at there is you are looking at uh, sort of all the different areas, right? So you'll notice that we didn't talk about fancy arm bars or chokes or knee bars or stuff like that. That actually comes into the intermediate section. When you get into your intermediate section of training on those ranks, that's when we're looking at more attribute-based techniques, things that take longer to develop. So when you're in there, you're going to be seeing things like uh, uh, arm bars, you're going to be seeing things like chokes, you're going to be seeing things that uh, take a little bit more finesse, like foot sweeps, stuff like that, maybe some uh, uh, harder striking combinations, maybe some a little bit more intricate trapping, uh, just trying to get you prepared a little bit more. And then the same with your advanced levels. You're going to see you know, even more attribute based. We'll get deeper into the trapping, get into some of the fine motor details about elbow placement, all that sort of thing. But the, the primary idea is that you have the, the roots already or the background knowledge to already adequately defend yourself. Now we're just making you um, more efficient in those methods. Uh, and then the idea is by the time you get to your senior level, your black belt, you have a really good understanding of these five areas, right? Of our striking, of our clinching, of our manipulation, of our trapping, and our grappling. And you can start to, uh, you can continue to train them all, or you can start to kind of specialize in the different areas if you wanted to. And say, well, I, you know, I, I got into my black belt, I really want to study that trapping more, or I really want to get good at the grappling, or you know, the, the throwing people down, or the clinching, or the sea lot is really my thing, whatever it might be but you have that good foundation, you have those good roots of all those areas. So by the time you get your black belt, then you can kind of go become a specialist if you want or continue to study all the different areas. You know, one thing we want to remember is that you're not really restricted on this, on this online learning center, meaning you don't have to just do the techniques at your rank. You can, you can look at every technique. You have access to every technique that's at your level of membership. Um, you know, uh, and, and that's okay. I mean, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. But what we want you to keep in mind is that we have sort of put this in an order uh, that, that to us anyways makes the most logical sense for learning. So one skill kind of builds upon another skill, kind of builds upon another skill. So um, you're not restricted to have to do it in the order that we present, although we do recommend that you try it that way. So in a lot of these videos, you're going to see kind of three main faces other than my own. You're going to see, uh, you're going to see Guru Brett Eckhart. You're also going to see uh, Larry Mouton. You're also going to see Tom Jones. Um, and one thing I want to mention, well, first thing I want to say thank you. Without, uh, without, uh, without Brett Eckhart and Larry Mouton and Tom Jones and also uh, Eric Thompson behind the camera a lot, uh, you, we wouldn't have this online learning center. So I want to say thank you to those guys. Uh, but what I'd also like to say... Uh, is that when you're watching, a lot of times when those guys are going through and demonstrating some of this material, they are demonstrating it at a slower pace, specifically so that you can see it. 
Um, now, we always recommend in the beginning that you go slow anyways and that you learn the technique as a, at, uh, at a slower pace. You can pick up on all the details because the faster we go, the less we see. Um, but I just want you to remember that they're moving at a little bit slower pace for you too. So it doesn't mean that the, te the pace they're moving is the only pace you can perform these techniques at. You know, as we said before, I want you to remember that uh, we are constantly updating, adding, adding new material. Uh, we're constantly trying to make things better. Um, so there's, there's always something new to learn, something fun to learn. Uh, but try to remember, too, that this is, this is set up that way because this is a life study. This, uh, you know, there's material here that you can learn absolutely really quick and use right away and immediately, and it should be. Um, and if you want to use it for that, that's great. But this is also set up to be a life study. So don't feel like you have to get... Um, everything all at once. Uh, I sure don't, that's for certain. Um, you know, when I look at my teachers, I, I, I see I see teachers, uh, I have teachers that are younger than me, I have teachers in their 20s, uh, I have teachers in their 30s when I think about it, uh, 40s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. Um, and I'm always impressed with the guys that are advanced in their years um, and, and, and just under because they have that mindset that it, it is a is a part of our thinking. It's a part of our culture. It's a part of just just how we process and how we live life is to continually learn and train and study because uh, that's the, the healthiest way you can do it. Uh, also, if you like the music that you hear uh, in the background of some of these videos, uh, check it out. Uh, we got this music at bloodandbones.com. Uh, and if you like some of that music, I encourage you to to check out the website and pick up some of their music. They got great stuff.